What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 220 1002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you are going to learn about Microsoft Windows networking on client and desktop computers. Let's talk about home group versus work group. So Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and 10 support two different types of Soho networks. You have work groups and home groups. The following sections, we're going to describe how they differ from each other. Work group networking. So in computer networking, a work group is a collection of computers connected on a LAN that share common resources and responsibilities. Work group is Microsoft's term for a peer to peer LAN. Computers running Microsoft operating systems in the same work group may share files, printers, or an internet connection. Windows 8, 8.1, and 10 all support work group networks. The computer name section of the system's property sheet is where you can identify work groups. Most computers are already in the default work group work group as soon as Windows is installed. And here is a lovely screenshot showing you the information that identifies the work group. Let's talk about home group networking. So starting with Windows 7, Microsoft added a new ad hoc home networking system known as home group. The system used a password to join computers into the group and allowed users libraries along with individual files and folders to be shared between multiple computers. Only computers running Windows 7 through Windows 10 version 1709 could create or join a home group. In October 2018, however, home Home group was removed from Windows 10 starting with version 1803. Home groups were allowed to coexist with work groups, but home group networking allowed for easier security and sharing than work groups permitted. And as a side note, regardless of either type of networking, only 10 computers at a time can connect to a work group or home group computer. Let's talk about domain setup. So a network domain is an administrative grouping of multiple private computer networks or hosts within the same infrastructure. Domains can be identified using a domain name. Domain names which need to be accessible from the public internet can be assigned a globally unique name within the domain name system. Some of the features of domain networking are you have shared resources such as files, folders, printers, and devices that are stored on Active Directory servers that are used to grant authentication to said resources. You have users on a domain can utilize any computer within the domain to get access to files and shared resources. You have group policies that can be set up to limit users to certain resources on the domain in addition to limiting configuration settings for users and you have different local networks with hundreds to thousands of users that can be a part of a single domain. Let's talk about network share. So in computing, a network share or a shared resource is a computer resource made available from one host to other hosts on a computer network. It is a device or piece of information on a computer that can be remotely accessed from another computer transparently as if it were a resource in the local machine. Network sharing is made possible by inter-process communication over the network. Shares can be provided in three ways ways. You have client server based network or on a peer to peer network with peer servers that support user group permissions where shares are protected by lists of authorized users or groups. You have work group networks that offer unlimited sharing for users who connect to a system if password protected sharing is disabled. And you have home group networks that offer read only access for shared resources to any home group user. Let's talk about administrative share. So an administrative share is a hidden network share created by Windows NT family of operating systems that can be identified by a dollar sign at the end of the share name that allows system administrators to have remote access to every disk volume on a network connected system. These shares cannot be seen by standard users when browsing to the computer over the network. They are meant for admin use 
only. These shares may not be permanently deleted, but they may be disabled. Admin shares cannot be accessed by users without admin privileges. All the shared folders that include admin shares can be found by navigating to computer management, system tools, shared files, and shares. Let's talk about map drive letters. So drive mapping is how operating systems such as Microsoft Windows associate a local drive letter with a shared storage area to another computer, which is often referred to as a file server over a network. After a drive has been mapped, a software application on the client's computer can read and write files from the shared stored area by accessing that drive, just as if that drive represented a local physical hard hard disk drive. Let's talk about printer sharing versus network printer mapping. So printers connected to network computers can be shared or printers can be connected directly to a network with Ethernet or Wi-Fi connections. To perform printer sharing, you would just open the devices and printers or the printers and faxes folder, right click a printer and select sharing, select share this printer and specify a share name, click additional drivers to select additional drivers to install install for other operating systems that will be used on the network for that printer. To perform network printer mapping, just open devices and printers in Windows 7, 8, 8.1, and 10 in the control panel. Click add a printer. Click add a network, wireless, or Bluetooth. Windows will search for a printer automatically. To bypass this, click the printer I want isn't listed. To find a printer on a domain-based network, choose find a printer in the directory based on location or features. To find a printer by name, choose select a shared printer by name. To find a printer by its URL or IP address, choose add a printer using a TCP IP address or host name, and then click next. Let's talk about establishing network connections. So to create connections in the network and sharing center, just click start settings, network and internet, and the following connection types will be available. You'll have VPNs, dial-ups, wireless wired, and wireless WAN or cellular. VPN connection. So a virtual private network extends a private network across a public network and enables users to send and receive data across shared or public networks as if their computing devices were directly connected to the private network. To configure a VPN connection, you would just go to the set up a connection or network dialogue and then click connect to a workplace and hit next. You would then click use my internet connection for VPN in Windows 7, 8, and 8.1, you would enter the IP address and the destination name. Select options such as use a smart card and remember my credentials if desired, and then click next. To make a connection later, you would click don't connect now, then click next and then close. Dial up connection. So dial up internet access is a form of internet access to establish a connection to an ISP by dialing a telephone number on a conventional telephone line. Dial up connections use modems to decode audio signals into data to send to a router or computer and to encode signals from the latter two devices to send to another modem. Windows can create two types of dial-up connections on systems with analog modems. You have dial-up networking that connects to an ISP, and then you have direct dialing connections to a corporate computer. Now, configuring a dial-up connection to an ISP in the setup, a connection or network dialog, you would click connect to the internet, then hit next, then click dial-up, hit next, enter the ISP's dial-up phone number, username and password, check the remember this this password box. If the user doesn't want to enter the password again, name the connection and then click connect. To configure direct dialing connections to corporate computers, you will go to the set up a connection or network dialog, click connect to a workplace, then hit next, click dial directly, then hit next. Enter the remote computer's dial up phone number and destination name. To connect now, you would click next. To set up the connection for later, you would check don't connect. Then you would enter the username and password, enter the domain, check the remember this password box if you don't want to enter the password again, and then you would hit the connect button.
Wireless connections. So wireless connections can be established by clicking on the SSID from the taskbar or settings menu. Go ahead and use these steps in the setup and connection or network dialog. Just click connect to a wireless network, then hit next. Enter the username, select the security type and enter the security key to start the connection automatically. Just check start this connection automatically, then hit next and then hit close wired connection so if setting up a point-to-point -point protocol over ethernet use a wired connection go to the setup a connection or network dialog click connect to the internet then hit next click broadband then hit next enter the username and password enter the domain check remember this password box so you don't have to input the password again and then hit connect wireless wide area network connection so a wireless wide area network is a form of a wireless network a wireless wide area network often differs from wireless lands by using mobile telecommunications cellular network technologies such as 2g 3g 4g and 5g to transfer data a wireless wide area network connection shows up in the list of network connections after a sim card is installed and activated by a mobile provider to use this type of connection, select it from the list of network connections displayed when selecting the network icon in the taskbar or settings. Let's talk about proxy settings. So in computer networking, a proxy server is a server application or appliance that acts as an intermediary for requests for clients seeking resources from servers that provide those resources. To configure manual proxy settings for a LAN connection in Windows, go to the Internet Properties dialog from the control panel, open the Connections tab, click the LAN settings. In the LAN settings windows, you want to choose the appropriate option under proxy server. If a single proxy server address and port number is used for all types of traffic, you're going to click use a proxy server checkbox and enter the address and port number provided by the network admin. If different proxy servers or ports will be used, you will click use a proxy server checkbox and then click advance Then specify the correct server and port numbers to use and then click OK. Remote desktop connection and remote assistant. So remote desktop services is one of the components of Microsoft Windows that allow a user to take control of a remote computer or virtual machine over a network connection. To enable remote desktop or remote assistance, just open the remote tab of the system's property sheet, click advance to specify how long an invitation remains valid and whether to accept connections only from Windows or our newer versions talk about home versus work versus public network settings. So in Windows, network connections are the settings pertaining to home, work, public, and private. Depending upon what network location is selected, it can affect how Windows firewall configures, protections, and networking features available to a particular PC. Firewall settings, you were just going to select system and security from the control panel to bring up the firewall settings in Windows 10 and then start clicking buttons until your heart's content. Configuring an alternative IP address in Windows. So an alternative IP address enables a system to stay on the network if the DHCP server fails or if the system is sometimes on a different network than normal. To change the settings, just follow these steps. Open the Network and Sharing Center. Click Change Adapter Settings. Click the Connection to Change. Click Change Settings of this connection. Internet Protocol Version 4, Properties, and then Alternate Configuration. And then this little screenshot down here is where you can put in all types of wonderful numbers to make your computer come to life. Let's talk about network card properties. So if you have to change the settings of a wired network adapter or a network card or a NIC, despite most NICs working well with the default settings, do the following. Go to Network and Sharing Center, click Change Adapter Settings, click Wired Connection, and then click Change Settings of this connection and hit the Configure button. Now, some of the available network card properties are as follows. You have half duplex, full duplex, and auto. These settings determine how a network card communicates with the rest of the network. Half duplex sends and receives data in separate operations. 
full duplex enables the adapter to send and receive data at the same time, which doubles the network speed and auto settings allow the adapter to determine the best setting. Then you have speed. Ethernet adapters can run at more than one speed, but the speed available is limited by the slowest network hardware. Do you have this thing called wake on land? This enables a computer connected to a wired network to be awakened from sleep mode via a special signal delivered over the network. You have QoS quality of service. This enables a computer connected to a wired network to optimize real time streaming traffic. And then you have BIOS or onboard NIC. This can be used to boot a computer if it is configured as a bootable device in the BIOS or UEFI firmware set up. All right, now let's go ahead and get into some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, which control panel applet in Windows provides access to the computer name, domain, and work group settings? Is it the credential manager? Is it the system? Is it user accounts? Or is it the admin tool? So which one of these provides access to that information? The correct answer is... The system is where you can find all of that wonderful information. Next question. Which of the following characters indicates that a Windows network share is intended for administrative access? Is it the pound symbol or the hashtag symbol? Is it the dollar sign? Is it the question mark? Or is it the ampersign or the and symbol? The correct answer is the dollar sign. And the final question is, which of the following takes advantage of cell towers that provide wireless signal coverage for mobile devices? Is it WPAN, WAN, satellite, or WLAN? So which of the following takes advantage of cell phone towers? The correct answer is WAN or wireless WAN. All right, so in summary, we have talked about Microsoft Windows networking on client and desktop computers. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead, hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A+, 220-1002, examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.